Do you want to use free AutoML tools in Python to automate your machine learning process? This tutorial will get you started with an example. I'll show you what is AutoML, some tips for using it, and we'll apply four popular automated machine learning tools in Python. By the end, you'll know which tool is best for your need and make your machine learning application easier. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Lian. Welcome to Just Into Data where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. So what is AutoML? As you know, applying machine learning to solve real-world problems is hard. The process involves many steps to reach a production-ready model. It can take much effort, even for industry experts. So it is especially challenging for beginners. Can we automate the process to make it simpler? Luckily, the high demand for machine learning has driven the efforts to automate the process to make it more approachable. And that's what AutoML is for. Automated machine learning, AutoML, is the process of automating machine learning workflows. This could include tasks like data preprocessing, algorithm selection, hyperparameter tuning, model training. In the most ideal situation, we as the users I only need to provide a raw data set. The AutoML tool should automatically produce good performing model pipelines. With Python being one of the most common data science languages, there are quite a few AutoML Python libraries available. I've reviewed some popular ones and I want to introduce four easy to use ones. H2O, Teapot, PyCarrot, and AutoGlua. These tools are not only useful for machine learning beginners, but also experienced data scientists. I know you're excited to just start throwing data into them, but please, let's first go through some important tips. Before using the AutoML packages, please make sure you've learned the basics of Python and machine learning. This is because even though automating the entire process sounds very attractive and promising, the existing AutoML tools are still limited and require human interventions. So I strongly recommend you to examine and clean the data slightly by yourself before feeding it into AutoML tools. And that's why you still need to know the basics of Python. Well, if you don't know anything about machine learning, you won't be able to run these tools properly and understand the results. Second, when setting up AutoML tools in Python, I recommend you to follow their installation guides. Because these AutoML packages often rely on other tools, which could be more complicated to set up than standard Python libraries. I'll put the links to the tools' websites in the description. Also, it's better to create virtual environments. Because the AutoML packages could be based on different versions of Python and so on. To avoid conflicts, I've set up a separate environment for each AutoML tool that we'll be using. So you'll be seeing me starting with a new session for each tool. All right, the last tip. You need to budget for a long time to train using these tools. This is because they often consider many choices of preprocessing steps, machine learning algorithms, methods of assembling, and so on. So it might even need to be run for hours to days to optimize the results. But don't worry, in this tutorial, will set up a maximum runtime for each tool for demonstration. So you don't have to run them long to get results. I know you can't wait to try the AutoML tools. Next, let's quickly look at our example dataset and pre-process it. So we'll use JupyterLab. Here is the code to pre-process the example datasets. Please go to the GitHub link in the description to download the notebooks and find the source to the dataset. We'll use the Household Electric Power Consumption Dataset. It is a time series recording of a household electric power usage between 2006 and 2010. So after loading the data, we pre-process it. As I've mentioned, you need to know basic Python to do this. If you need help, please check out our course, Python for Data Analysis with Projects. This course shows how to use Python for basic analysis like this which is essential before applying AutoML. I'll put the link in the description. Let's quickly skim through the code here. From the original dataset, we grab the date time as well as the electricity usage data. This will be our target. 
will try to predict the electricity usage of the household. Then we set the daytime column as the index and sort by it. The original data set has data for every minute. We'll resample it to hourly, so it's less data. Then we'll set up new columns to store electricity usage with the missing data being filled, as well as the usage one hour ago, two hours ago, and two eight hours ago. We also store the month of the year as a feature since the electricity usage could show seasonality. Then we'll drop the missing data if there are any, and split the data set into a training set and a test set. When it's done, let's print out the first few rows of the training set. So our target is electricity usage, and we have nine features. Electricity usage one hour lag, two hour lag, and two eight hour lag, and months. We'll use the previous eight hours of electricity usage and the months of the year to predict the household's electricity usage. Now we are ready to feed the data set into AutoML tools. We'll start from the library H2O. H2O is an open source, in memory, distributed fast and scalable machine learning platform. Its core code is written in Java, but we can use it in other languages like Scala, R, and Python. The tool currently supports both supervised and unsupervised learning problems. As mentioned earlier, please follow the installation guide since the process is not as straightforward as the standard Python libraries. Now back to the Jupyter Notebook. We'll look at the code to use H2O. First, we initialize a connection between our Python and the H2O local server. Let's run this. If the connection is successful, you should be able to see a summary like this. And it says connecting to H2O server successful. Nice. So H2O uses its unique objects. Instead of using the pandas data frames, we need to convert the DF train to H2O frame. H2O frame is a 2D array of uniformly typed columns, so similar to the pandas data frame in many ways. Then we also identify the target and features columns as Y and X. Next, we can use the H2O object to automate our supervised machine learning model training. This object trains several models and by default, cross-validated. We've set a couple parameters in the argument. Sort metric, this is to set the MSE, mean squared arrow, as the metric to sort the model performance by. Max runtime seconds as five minutes as the maximum time the process will run for. Again, this is only set to be short so that you can test this tool quickly. The actual process should take much longer. Also set seed as an integer for reproducibility. However, because we've set the max run time, H2O cannot guarantee the same results after each run. You can read more about it in their documentation. I'll leave a link in the description. Then we just train using our training dataset, which is transformed into this H2O frame. Let's run it. Within the AutoML progress note, You'll notice it says XGBoost is not available, skipping it. This is because I'm running this in a Windows environment, and XGBoost is not supported on Windows, which is a limitation of H2O. Now that it's done, below the progress bar, you'll see the model details about the best performing model trained in this session and its metrics. In our example, is stacked ensemble. To look at all the top performing models, we can print out the leaderboard. This returns an H2O frame storing the top models and their metrics. So far, the metrics we've seen are all calculated based on the training set. The data we've fed into the H2O functions. We can also calculate metrics based on the holdout test data set DF test. Again, we can convert DF test into an H2O frame 
and then predict based on it to get y pred. We can also grab y actual, the actual data, and use the H2O mean squared error function to calculate the MSE. There you go. At the end, you might want to see a comparison of the predicted and the actual data for the test set. First, we compile the two series of data into a pandas data frame and use the plot method to look at them. You can see how closely the prediction follows the actual target. And that's it for the H2O library. Next, we'll move on to the next AutoML tool, Teapot. Teapot, which stands for Tree-Based Pipeline Optimization Tool, is a Python automated machine learning tool based on the popular machine learning package, Scikit-Learn. As you can see here, it automates the process including feature setup, model selection, and parameter optimization. The tool follows a technique called genetic programming, which applies operations similar to natural genetic processes to evolve programs. Again, please follow its official documentation to install the package. Now let's go to JupyterLab. As I've mentioned, it's better to use different virtual environments for each tool. So here is another notebook open under an environment that's suitable for Teapot. The first cell contains the same code to pre-process the data. I've already run it, so now we have the same training and test sets. And we can start training with Teapot. Teapot is designed to be as similar as Scikit-Learn. So you may find it easier to use if you're familiar with Scikit-Learn. First, we create an instance of the class Teapot Regressor since ours is a regression problem. Within the argument, we've set some parameters, generations and population size. Those two parameters are related to the genetic programming. In general, the higher these numbers, the better Teapot can work. But we set both of them to be 10 which are even lower than their default values of 100 to simplify the process. Verbosity determines how much information Teapot prints out while it's running. Two means it will print more information as well as provide a progress bar so that we can see the process. Scoring sets the function used to evaluate the quality of a pipeline. We'll use the negative mean square error, which is the negative MSE. Max time means is to limit the optimization time of Teapot to 5 minutes. And lastly, random state equals 666. We're setting the seed of the pseudo-random number generator for reproducibility. Let's run this. Then, we'll separate the features and the target of the training set. Now we are ready to feed the data into Teapot to optimize the machine learning pipeline. This fit function uses genetic programming with cross-validation to find the optimal pipeline. There it is. Because 5 minutes is pretty short, so Teapot had to close prematurely. But that's fine, since this is only for demonstration. We can see the current best pipeline is rich CV here. We can also run this line of code to export the optimized pipeline as Python code. After this is done, if you go to the directory and find this file, if you open it, you can see the code for the best pipeline. Back to the notebook. We can also evaluate the pipeline using the test set. First, separate the features from the target of the test set, and then use the score function to get the score. Since earlier, here, we've set the score as an active MSE. So this score here returned the negative MSE. So the MSE would be the positive part of this number. We could also verify this by using the sklearn code to calculate the mean squared error. There it is. It's the same number as above. In the end, let's also plot the comparison of the prediction and the actual data of the test set. There it is. That's it for Teapot. Next, let's look at PyCarrot. 
PyCarrot is a Python library that automates machine learning workflows. It is, of course, based on other Python machine learning libraries, including Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, LightGBM, and so on. PyCarrot mainly targets citizen data scientists who prefer low code, but it's also for other data science users. We can use PyCarrot for both supervised and unsupervised learning problems. Please follow the installation guide to set up PyCarrot. Again, here's a notebook with another virtual environment suitable for PyCarrot. I've already run the first cell to generate the same training and test sets. We'll train our data set with a regression module from PyCarrot. PyCarrot actually also has a time series module, but it is still in beta at the time of this video being recorded, so we're not using it here. First, we set up the training environment and create the transformation pipeline. Within the argument, we set data as the training set, target being the column electricity usage, and this parameter session ID, which is for reproducibility. When the setup function is executed, PyCarrot automatically infers the data types in the dataset. So when it's done, you can see the columns in the dataset together with their inferred data types. If they are correct, we can press Enter to continue the process. If they are not, in the setup function, you can use the numeric features, categorical features, date features, parameters to specify their types. Now this process is executed and print a summary. Next, we can use the compare models function to train and evaluate the model performance based on cross-validation. We've set two parameters for its argument. This is to set MSE mean squared error as a sorting criteria of the results, and we are setting the time limit to be five minutes again. After this is done running, it prints out a list of models and their scores. You can see the best model is LightGBM, followed by CatBoost, GBR, and so on. To look at the best performing model of LightGBM, we can print it out. To calculate the MSC metrics on the test set, we can use a mean square error function from sklearn. Note that the predictions label is the predicted data. There it is. And lastly, let's also plot to compare the actual data and the predicted data. All right, that closes the demo for PyCarrot. Let's move on to the last tool covered in this tutorial, AutoGluon. AutoGluon is an AutoML tool that works not only for tabular data, but also for text and images. It focuses on automated stack assembling, deep learning, and so on. It seems to only cover supervised learning problems. Please follow the installation guide to set up AutoGluon. Again, this is a notebook and there are virtual environments suitable for AutoGluon. We'll still start from the same training and test sets. We'll use the tabular module for our example. Within the tabular predictor, we set up a few parameters. The label is electricity usage, is a regression problem, and the evaluation metric is mean squared error. Then, we use a fit function to train the models. We also set the time limit to be 5 minutes. It's 5 times 60 since it's in seconds. When it's running, you should be seeing the process and the summary printed. I'll skip reviewing the details of the results. Now if you want to look at the top models and their information, we can use a leaderboard. This and this seem to contain the same information. But this one below is easier to read in the notebook, so let's look at this one. The best one is weighted ensemble L2, and we can see its metrics in each column. Next, we can use the evaluate function to see the metrics for our test set. You can see metrics 
including the negative MSE being printed. I know it says mean squared error here, but this is actually negative MSE. And we can also plot to compare the actual and the predictive values. There you go. That's all for the four auto ML tools in Python I want to cover in this tutorial. Besides them, there are also other popular Python auto ML tools that you might have heard of. We've excluded them from this guide due to different reasons. For example, auto sklearn, this package only explicitly supports the Linux operating system, so not Windows or Mac OS. Hyperopt sklearn, the package is less updated based on their GitHub history. There's also Google or other cloud services. This often costs money. With that said, you can usually try them for free. So please test this out as you need. In this tutorial, you've learned about AutoML and how to use four popular tools in Python. Hope now you can try them out to automate your machine learning process. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.